Hello, my name's uh, Sarah Perks. I'm a freelance set and costume designer and um, I'm also the set and costume designer for Gypsy at Curve. Um, this is the third show that I've done here, um, uh, both others with both Paul Kerrison and David Needham. Uh, namely uh, King and I, really, so it's the same creative team that brought you King and I. Um, and we're hoping to recreate the success of that show. Um, and I suppose in the way that we did King and I, we did it period, but we made it fresher and newer for a modern audience um, and lighter in touch. This is hopefully what we're going to achieve with Gypsy as well. Um, and namely the period is set by five huge billboards um, which fly in and out and create a sort of flying ballet um, at various points um, and these billboards signify a period um, and they make social comment on the action that is taking place um, and also uh, they, two of them have the ability to change because they are in fact projections um, as well as painted billboards so that we can make a witty comment on the scene coming or the scene that we've just seen. Um, so we are actually, in fact, in 1920s uh, America. So we start out in the early 20s um, and we go right the way through till about 1933. Um, uh, in my research about Gypsy Rosalie herself, the real Gypsy Rosalie, um, it's quite difficult to find direct quotes about dates because her mother lied so often about her age wanting to keep her girls very small and very young so they can, can continue in vaudeville um, but as far as I know we Gypsy made it to New York to Minsky's burlesque house the big burlesque house at the time uh, in about 1933-1934 so we get the we get the glamour of the early 30s but earlier on in the show we get the I suppose it's the sort of seediness of um, people struggling to survive as well through the 20s and make a living in what was actually a dying art, uh, which was vaudeville. Because vaudeville was battling at the time against the coming of cinema, which then turned into the coming of talkies. Um, and then, of course, the Great Depression hit in 1929, uh, which um, had a huge impact, as, as everyone knows, on, on everything in America. Um, but particularly Vaudeville, which had basically died a death by then. And we see that journey and that story, that social story told in by a very personal way with Rose and her family, really, and how they struggle across America. One of the things that attracted me to doing uh, the musical Gypsy, not only is it a fantastic musical, because it's got a really great story, which is not always the case with, uh, with some musicals, but Gypsy has, and it's based on... Uh, real life, uh, a real memoir, um, is also that towards the end we get the fantastic um, burlesque costumes uh, and I get to design those and we get to see them and the audience will get to see a fantastic strip montage that, that uh, Victoria who's playing Gypsy or Louise as she is and you see the transformation from Louise into Gypsy in the space of about six minutes so these six minutes, she wears um, four fabulous strip costumes. Um, but she's always a lady, as Gypsy Rosalie was known as, being, being a stripper that didn't show very much, <laughs> if anything, in fact. Um, so yes, Victoria has got the, the job of uh, doing a strip montage, which takes us across four cities across America, which is Wichita, Detroit, Philadelphia, and ending up in New York. Um, and so her first frock is uh, a gold tasseled number, floor length, and all she does is um, drop her shoulder strap <laughs> and drop her feather boa and then zips off. Does a massive quick change in the space of about 20 seconds and she goes into her second frock, which is uh, this one, which is a black rhinestone number, uh, which has a little secret in the lining which she will reveal to you if you come see the show. Um, uh, and then she does another quick change into uh, a diamond in Philadelphia, which is what the introduction introduces her as. So there's a, a, a fabulous uh, penny sequin number with loads of um, tassel skirt and an enormous picture hat, uh, which is used in the strip as a way of hiding her and keeping her a lady. 
Um, and then the final, final uh, strip com uh, uh, costume is... Um, it's actually based on a basque that Marilyn Monroe wore, uh, my design, uh, in the film Bus Stop. Um, although that was something, although it's a lot later Bus Stop, it was something that Gypsy kind of wore as well. She wore something very similar. Um, and it's, yes, green satin with gold tassels and a huge, huge green silk skirt which comes off to reveal a red bustle which comes off. Which, uh, and then the basque comes off and she uses ostrich feather fans to uh, hide herself. But, um, I mean, my job is not only just to do uh, the designs, but it's also to think about it practically. It's to think about um, how physically, in front of 900 strong audience, she does that strip and where the zips are, where the fastenings are, where the hooks are, how easy it is, and also... Um, how many times that costume's got to come on and off during the course of our um, uh, four-week run, five-week run, um, and how much wear and tear that's going to take. So hopefully I've got it right, but there will inevitably be problems, but that's, that's what the team here address as we go along, um, and we'll work with Victoria to make sure she's comfortable, and David, the choreographer, to do that.